those meeting minutes? Yes, I did. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> did you have any comments or questions or changes? No, I'd just uh, make a motion to accept them as presented. All right, we have a motion to accept the minutes as presented. Do we have a second? We have multiple seconds. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. All right, motion passes. And we have one abstention. All right. Is that Paul? Paul yes. Abstain? Next on the agenda, projects of minimal impact report. Michelle. Yes, uh, thank you. You should have received uh, in the packet for February. Uh, the Minimal Impact Report in 25 Grand Street in the Historic Modern Density District Assessor's Map 11, Lot 16, HDC 5, 2024, application for in-kind roof repairs was approved. All right. Thank you, Michelle. All right. Next on the agenda, public comments by visitors. If anybody would like to come up and make a comment at this time, please do so now. All right, seeing there is none, we will move on to the first one on our agenda of old business. But before we do so, I just want to welcome Paul, who is our new council chair. So please welcome him. And then we will move on to old business. Any old business before the commission tonight? Yes, Madam Chair. I had asked staff to provide um, a copy of a previous approval from a Maple Street property. Um, and I'd like to probably bring that up under old business to see where that project now stands. It seems to be still quite half done. All right, Michelle. Yes, so uh, I had staff look into this item and uh, Shane, our code compliance officer, has reached out to 24 Maple Street, but he's going to follow back up regarding, I think it's the handrails. Well, the approval from this board gave it a certain approval and I'm trying to go by memory and just hoping the file could refresh that of the column type and style for a number of years it was held up with temporary two by fours and then the brick set of stairs was installed and then more recently some four by fours were propped up and I just wanted to get confirmation of what was approved then as an old business to what is or isn't there now that's all I think I asked for actually the particular day, so this I don't know if there's a big file for that. I doubt it. Hold on a minute. I, th I thought Anna sent out this uh, back to the board members. But. Only she did. She did say that she recovered the files. So that's all I was told. All right. HDC approvals for twenty-four. Uh, Maple Street with regards to replacement of the steps and support columns that hold up the portico, uh, portico over the steps. Um, so, hold on. I got a lot of paper. There was a building permit that was issued for this application. Uh, there was an inspection done. And I believe... Uh, we don't know if somebody followed up with Correct. A, there was a, a rough inspection. inspection done to see where the steps sat on. Yes. And then that particular inspector didn't wasn't working here anymore after that. So it, it, the work continued after I left. So I don't know what and I don't know where I don't know I don't know our approvals were for. And I doubt it was for two four by fours. Just all I'm just wanna know what we approved back then. And if you don't have that, we can. I was going to say, do we want to table and, we can, yeah. and wait until further research can be done? I don't mind that. Okay. Because I, I probably caught the plan a little off guard asking that question so quickly. So I apologize for that. Okay. So why don't we go ahead and table until. See what was approved and if what's there, what was, is that what was approved? Because I doubt it. I just don't remember. And so does I anyone think... else remember that project? 20... I don't remember it. Well, the, most recently, there used to be some two by fours. They were just coming off the side of the hot top. They have, they've been replaced with not quite plumb four by fours. And I so I think the request is we really. Re we requested probably 
columns that were similar, more than likely some sort of handrail design. That's very typical of what we do. Right now there's no handrail. So this that was the question. I think the question is we're posing to city staff to make sure that what is there was approved and has also been um, approved by city. Correct? Sure. So I think if Michelle wants to have that as a takeaway to city staff to verify that what was installed meets the approval criteria and move forward based on what they find. Correct? Sounds perfect. That All sounds right. good. All right. All those in favor of having city staff take that on? Yeah. All right. We will move forward with that in city staff's hands. All right. Any other old business? All right, seeing there is none, we will move on to new business. First on the agenda is Cynthia White and Ali Kalem, and I apologize if I, if I said that incorrectly, are seeking a certificate of appropriateness for installed windows on a property located at 2 Main Street. Michelle. Oh, hold on a minute. Yes, so uh, this applicant is before us. Uh, the request is to add four vinyl windows to the patio enclosure. Uh, there was a, an approval back in 2020 in the rear of the building. Uh, you should have received my staff memo about this. Uh, in the packet included the windows. Uh, they have already been installed as part of the application. Um, so they're coming back in a, after the fact permit and uh, trying to uh, get in compliance with the historic district regulations. All right, thank you. Do we have anybody who would like to talk about the application at this time? Oh, uh, is the little green light on in the mic? Now it is. Okay, thank you. Can you hear me better? Could you repeat your name? And My name is Cynthia White, and I represent the Anatolia restaurant, and I'm here on behalf of Ali, Ali Kalem, and on, uh, on behalf of Michelle and Tony, and they own the building. Okay. Do you want to elaborate any more on the project at all before we open it up to uh, comments from neighboring um, applicants? sorry, neighboring buildings, and then also to the board members. Sure, I'm just going to read something that I wrote because, um, because I get a little nervous when I speak in public no and I already wrote it out. Okay. Yeah. So um, the change of window treatments for the pre-existing cutouts are in the addition of the building. No changes were made to the original historical structure whatsoever. We did, in fact, hold on a second. We did, in fact, change soft vinyl clear roll-ups for a more suitable window treatment for the New England climate. We had custom windows built and inserted in the pre-existing cutouts in the addition. The custom windows make the property more efficient for year-round use, and the building is visually more attractive inside and out. Due to the fact the work was done in an addition to the historical building, and this is our first experience ever having to deal with historical property, by the way, um, we did not, in fact, think that we needed a permit because it was in the addition and not on the original structure. Um, so the window treatments, where am I? The window, so from soft to hard. So we just put, we just changed the window treatments out. There was ugly old vinyl roll-ups that were dirty and smeared and scarred. And we put, we had custom windows uh, made and put in the existing cutouts. That's all I have to say. All right, thank you. Thank you so um, much. I'll let you take a seat because I know we have a few other comments and then we'll open it up to the board so we might bring you back just to answer a couple questions. Sure. All right. Um, I believe at this time we also have some possible comments from a Butters. Is that the case? Michelle? I do have a comment that was submitted uh, from Dana Hilliard. Honorable members of the board, it is with unwavering support and pride that I write this letter standing by the recent changes that have taken place at the old Boston and Main Railway Station located at 2 Main Street. Since the opening of the new Mediterranean restaurant, Anatolia, the owners have helped Summersworth become a destination. 
The restaurant was featured on New Hampshire Chronicle and is well known for not only their exquisite cuisine, but their friendly atmosphere and dedication to our community. My understanding is that the owners of the restaurant will be before the historic district this month for a renovation that was completed to enclose the outside patio, making it a room more suited uh, for New England weather, while adding much needed space to the restaurant itself. As part of that re uh, renovation, four vinyl windows were added to the patio enclosure. It is these windows that are under the review by the HDC. These windows can't be seen from public highway and the windows in question mirror those of the mills that sit opposite of the old railroad station that now houses Anatolia Mediterranean Restaurant. The one difference being the mill and the upstairs windows are vertical, while the additional windows are horizontal in placement. It is also my understanding that no changes were made to any part of the original structure at any time during the construction of the room, and I believe it is in the best interest of both the city and the historic district to allow these windows to remain as is. Summersworth must continue to stand strong by all businesses who support our hilltopper values of neighbor helping neighbor. The owners of Anatolia Restaurant no, not only model these values but live them on a daily basis. All right, thank you, Michelle. Okay, at this time we will open it up to comments, questions from the board. Um, I think I will start um, and then I'll go around if anybody else has anything else to add. I'm not opposed to this. Um, obviously, I think it was a learning curve for this particular applicant that, you know, just because it's an addition, um, they still have to come before the board anytime that they touch anything within the building on the exterior, not the interior, very much clarification. Um, but because of that, this is not within sight of a public way, I'm okay with this because again, it didn't change the style of the building that was permitted. Um, but again, I just want to have that caveat that I think this was a learning curve and I think that they now know that if anything else goes forward, they come back to us. So any other questions or comments from board? Richard. I remember this project came before us. I don't believe it was this applicant. I believe it was a previous business that was there. And of course, this was at the height of COVID and they were, all the restaurants were looking to have the open air experience, but still have an enclosure so it was kind of a mixed use in that sense and i remember we had granted this to do that with the openings almost like a half wall and i remember another caveat we put on that was to consider this an outdoor structure still because obviously once it's enclosed we have no say over the inside but this is the open air uh platform if you will for the railroad station that used to be there so I believe we had made that comment that it should be still considered outdoor, even though it's now enclosed. Um, you know, seeing what has been done with the walls and the windows, it actually looks great. I, I really have no objection to it whatsoever. It's just, it, it's an odd situation because of the whole COVID related reasoning to building it. And now later on it gets closed in and becomes an enclosed structure. And, you know, I, I kind of wonder, you know, did even have footings to be put on to build, be built properly because originally it was only half walls, I thought. So, you know, I, I guess I have some questions about whether it was constructed appropriately, but as far as appearance goes, I, I'm more than happy with it. I, I think it looks fitting for the for the placement in the building and so on. I, I certainly don't have any um, reason to say that I would be against what is there now. It looks nice. It, fills the area well and obviously is a much needed space for the business. So, you know, again, really no objections to it overall. Just it's an odd way that it played out. Great. Paul? To build on uh, Richard's comments, um, I think my primary concern is not necessarily with the aesthetic of what is there now, um, but with the sort of incremental enclosure of this what was formerly outdoor space and if they had you know I don't know what the conversation was with the HDC previously but if they had come at the time that this outdoor uh, structure that is permeable with large openings in it or half height walls um, and but instead of proposing that if they had proposed an enclosed structure with windows that was then essentially turning a sort of platform into 
an outdoor room that is no longer really outdoors. I don't know. I think it would have been a different conversation. So I do, there is, I don't really have an issue with it now, but I guess I am concerned that, you know, 10 years from now, they're like, oh, well, let's just put a heater out there and we'll put in a new floor. And suddenly it's now just a part of the building and it's a part of the building that incrementally happened, but the HDC never had the opportunity to be like, should this be part of the building and not just a patio, right? So that that's kind of where I'm like, I don't know how how far this could continue to incrementally get away from the original intent, um, which might not be what, you know, what was envisioned. So that's my two cents. Tim. <clears throat> well, you're, you're spot on with your train of thought, Paul. Um, there has been a new floor installed in there, and, and I believe the original half walls with screens was just on hot top. That's now a floor. There's a heater. There's a fireplace. Not, not a, I think it's a gas or an electric fireplace that's in there. I'm a frequent customer. Um, it does look good. Uh, that said, um, there was a condition of approval that was placed on that approval, which speaks to exactly what Richard spoke about. And the condition was that the outside space, even if screened in, which meaning it wasn't even screened in then, uh, would be considered always outdoor space, would be considered outdoor space. So that condition of that approval back in 2020 runs true. If they had come to us prior to any work with this proposal to expand this indoor, outdoor dining to make it indoor dining, I'm asking myself, would I be opposed to it, considering we have a little bit of foresight to know what they're absolutely proposing because we can go look at it. Normally, we you know we look at a drawing or a plan and have to imagine what it might look like, and sometimes we imagine correctly, and other times we're we got it wrong or we've been explained to it in error. I don't think any any ill harm was ex was intended, and if this was half walls and insect screen now, and they were coming here to propose to put in what they did put in, I would probably support it and approve it. So I'm not going to disapprove what was there. I just think the process didn't get followed and it should have. And like Laura said, there's a learning curve here that, um, you know, could have, should have, would have known, should have, yes. Property owner should have known. Uh, business owner should have known. And uh, potentially, Patrons who should have known. Um, none of that happened, so there's a m numerous pieces that didn't quite all fit together, and here we are. But I don't have a problem with how it turned out. Um, I may have a concern whether if, well, to Richard's point, is it structurally sound, they utilize the existing roof structure on existing footings to, for a roof and ceiling. So, yes, it is structurally sound. <clears throat> the flooring is hard to imagine. It can fall further than it's already sitting on the hot top. Um, but were other permits and inspections taking place to ensure that safety? That's not our job here to do that. I do know that they have gas appliances out in there. Um, are there enough exit signs now? Is there sprinkler coverage? Was it needed? There's all those other things that need for other boards and hurdles to take care of. But for us, I'm good. So. And I do, before I go to anybody else, just want to say, to your point, Tim, we don't uh, maintain, like, if it's up to code, we don't maintain any of the interior modifications. So let's just try, like, to your point, to stick with what we can and cannot rule on. So before I move on to anybody else, just please keep that in mind. But, Paul, I did see your hand. Just a clarification from, from Michelle. Do you, not the purview of this board, but is there planning board or zoning implications to this change of use from an outdoor space to an indoor space? Uh, no, there's none. And our code, uh, our building inspector actually went out and our electrical inspector went out to the site 
when we became aware of the situation and inspected it to make sure that it was safe. Okay, so it's been inspected. It's up to up to snuff on zoning and planning. Uh, so the question really is just to sort, which is our purview anyways, but just for ease of mind, I suppose. Um, yeah, I have no issue with it. Any other questions, comments? George? Yeah, I, I just think, um, I mean, there were no permits pulled on this. I, I think this was a fast one. I think it's wrong. Uh, they want us to okay the windows that they've already put in. But to look at all the other work, I mean, this has been going on for a while. And not only that, in 2020, as we stated, it says even if screened will be considered outdoor space. It's always supposed to be a three season space. And they made part of the building now. This is inside. Um, I just think it's wrong. So that's where I might with it. I, I just I don't think it's right. They they did a lot of work. Somebody knew this was an uh, an important building in town. And I know the owners did. You know, whether the people that are renting it, they had to know this is a historic building. Right dead center of town. And they're getting away with it. So, just my thought. All right. Richard? And just to go on that train of thought for a minute, I mean, too often we get people that, you know, and, and it's not just a historic district either, that just simply do building construction without getting permits. And, it, you know, after it's done, it's done. Rarely do we make anybody return something to what it should be or was before. But, you know, it ends up being a slap on the wrist because somebody just does something without asking prior to. And, you know, then, of course, the fine is double the price of a permit, which is peanuts. So it's it's kind of ridiculous that there's really no um, punishment for it, unfortunately. Again, like I said, I'm not against what is there now. But the process certainly failed. Any other comments, questions? All right, do we have any motions? All right, seeing there is none at this time, I will make one. And, you know, I'm not usually one to do it, but since we're crickets all over the place, I will do it. <laughs> um, I will say I am proposing to uh, approve as submitted um, because, again, I kind of favor with Tim that I don't know that I would have not approved this if it had come before us as presented um, as it stands today. I understand the platform idea, I do, but I also look at that this could easily be reverted back, in my opinion. So. That is my motion to accept as presented. We have a second. All those in favor? All those opposed? No. One. George, should you oppose? Yes. Thank you. Paul, you second that, right? Correct. Yes. Thank you. So I got my minute for that. All right. So with that, the motion passes. All right. Next on the agenda, Peter Merrill is seeking a certificate of appropriateness to install a dormer on a property, or sorry, a proposed attic unit on a property located 86B High Street. Michelle. Yes, thank you. The applicant is seeking to construct a dormer on the rear side of the building to support an interior change of use. It will have a 36 by 36 double hung vinyl window and vinyl siding on the dormer. Uh, you should have all received uh, my staff report and I think this application is ready for the historic district to review all right thank you Michelle do we have anybody to talk about this application tonight okay so we'll call you up in case we have any questions all right so then we will open it up to the board if we have any comments questions discussion Uh, do we have any abutters or anybody who else would like to make comments before we open this up as well? It, now's the time, if we do. Going once? All right. All right, well, we'll go back to the board for open discussion. Paul, I saw your hand first. 
Um, well, I think generally I'm uh, excited to see the proposal for additional housing and utilizing um, underutilized space in the downtown. So I think generally that's good. Um, there is precedent in the same block for a dormer directly next to this property. Um, I'm assuming that has come before the HDC sometime in the recent past. The In our packet, we have photos that are taken from, I'd say, the 20 teens, and the dormer on that building to the right is not there, and yet in the photos provided by the applicant, um, you can see the dormer on the abutting property. So that's a fairly recent addition, so there is precedent for what they're asking for. Um, I guess my biggest concern in, uh, I'm not against the dormer, I think it can be accommodated, but I would wanna make sure that it is closely matching the one next door for consistency of the block, because I think it will look very, uh, if, not, if the dimensions and angle of that dormer are inconsistent with the rest of the massing of the block and the dormer next door, it's gonna look very uncoordinated and not good. So that would be my primary concern. All right, thank you, Paul. And yes, to answer your question, that one did come before the HDC and was approved through the normal process. Um, any other comments? Richard. I have to agree with Paul. I believe this plan shows a uh, pitched roof, like a hip roof dormer instead of a shed roof dormer. So it, it does make it rather inconsistent. And I think, it, you know, but I believe it's on the back as they're proposing it rather than the front. So it's, it's on a different side, but I, I guess I have some questions as to what this really does look like and where it's gonna be placed just for clarifications, if that's possible. Would you like to come up and answer any of those questions? And I'll just ask you to state your name for the record first. I'm Peter Merrill. Um, it's, on that it's saying on the back, it was supposed to be for the front so it you're saying that you would like it to be on the same facade that the other dormer yeah, currently I mean, next gonna door do, i was going to do it identical to the one that's right next to it okay because the drawings um just for clarification before i go back to other board members it shows more of a gable roof an arched roof instead yeah. of the sh so you're uh, um you are changing the application to be more the flat identical yes, to what's to next like door style, like what's okay. right next to it with the same color siding Okay, thank you. Uh, Richard, you have... So is it the same property owner for the one that does currently have the shed no. dormer? So it's a separate... It's the same roof, but it's... Yeah, it looks like the same building even, but it's a separate separate property then. Right. So would this shed dormer be separate from... It wouldn't be extended. No. It wouldn't extend the one that's there. there. It would be a separate one. Be like, like 10 feet from it. Yeah, and would it... So if you're proposing to do the same thing that's there, I mean, again, the pictures we have right, show yeah, yeah. something completely different. That's, you know, and this is the problem is we like to know what we're approving yep. to be able to see what we're approving. So, you, so you're proposing to build a shed dormer of the same dimensions and size as what's yep. next door, basically. Yep. Same and trim. It's going to be the same size as what's Same trim, there. same yep. reveal on the siding and yep. everything. Okay. I mean, if you're duplicating that, I guess I really wouldn't have a problem with this because it would it would just make that whole building tie together and look more fitting. So right. I certainly would be in favor of that. Paul, and then we'll go Liz, and then we'll go right down the road to Tim, and then over here. I guess one one more question on on because we don't have a plan that locates this on the roof. So um, it's great to hear that you're anticipating to duplicate the dormer adjacent to it. I guess my cons my next like more detailed level concern is then how is that dormer aligned with the fenestration below it? I, I'm just you know you could put it in a way that it's still going to look gauche. It's going to look wrong if it's not aligned in a way consistent with the rest of the building. So I think a I think getting a better understanding of where this dormer lands as it relates to the windows under it um, and as it relates to the existing condition uh, would be good because. You, my guess is from the inside, the owner's gonna want to put it wherever is most convenient for their internal programming, but that. Um, it's completely open up to talk. Yeah, so, so it might it be able to nudge around. So, I mean, that's good. So uh, that would be my concern is I would want a little more clarity on where that dormer is landing. It's gonna be, well, I can try to explain it. Um, you have the office downstairs with the 
all the windows and then you have uh, two doors to the right for the two apartments it will be just to the right of the left hand door which I believe is 84 it's just really hard it, like all the words could in the world could not explain what a plan could explain so like getting up to for me at least you know getting a, a markup of the roof indicating where would be helpful it's just very very hard to conceptualize exactly where it's one of those it's you know it's kind of a nuanced question really that i think requires a visual all right move move on to liz i, I was going to ask the same question about the where on the roof is it exactly um you know if you could you could mark up a photograph and say it's centered on this but we'd still need to sort of understand what if some idea of what the maybe the openings below in the photo what the width is versus the width of the dormer just to try to understand the proportion of the dormer to the uh, to the rest of the building um, I saw another note on the in the written description that you need to relocate a door can you tell us where that door is that would be moving it's inside in the inside okay those are my questions Tim um, <clears throat> I honestly would like to reject the application or at least suspend it. The applicant has written that the dorm is proposed on the back. The representative says, no, that's wrong. It's on the front. The applicant supplied plans to show a gable land with valleys, but the applicant representative says, no, it's going to be a shed dorm with a pitch roof. We don't have the location on the roof on any plan. We don't have the siding or the material identified, the size of the trim. The trim on the windows, all the things that typically we would see, um, and I think this and this is, although the information supplied would create a complete application, it's certainly not what the representative here is saying he's going to construct, and we don't have plans on what he's going to construct. Even the drawing, the hand drawing, identifies the street is which is really three blocks away. It says Main Street on the plan. Um, it's just lock, low effort on the applicant's part to present us with documentation that provides us information on what to ju be, be judgment of. That's all. So I, I would, I'd like to just propose to table this until the applicant come back with accurate stuff. I would second that motion. We don't have any motions yet, so hold. <laughs> so I, I would actually make a motion because I'm looking at this application and it says, you know, very clearly, a dormer will need to be added to the back of the unit. So now we're hearing that it's going to be the front of the unit. It, none of these plans, as Tim pointed out, look anything like the dormer that's next door. And I have a real problem if it's going to look a pitched roof as opposed to the flat shed roof. I this looks like it's a single window the other one has kind of a double window i just uh, this is a, a no for me unless we get more detail and i'm not saying no in general i just i don't want to approve something that is not what we think we're approving okay um but we did have a few more hands before we move on to motion so i'd like to have them here so george was next and then we can move on to those kind of motions uh is this an add-on to another apartment or did i read in here some way that's going to be a studio apartment It'll be in a studio. Studio. So where are the stairs coming from? They're going to be up at the top of the ones that are already there. There's going to be a landing at the top. With so you've got outside stairs coming on, too? Inside. Inside. Okay. So you'll be able to go from the second floor to the third floor inside the building. Yep. Okay. All right. Yep. Any other? Richard? So I'd, I'd just like to say state. You know, if, if you do come back with plans that show the shed dorm or more detail, I, myself, I would certainly probably approve this. So please don't think that we're trying to turn you away from this. I just, we've been burnt too many times with yep. people that show up with plans that are not what they say, and then it's not built as to what we expect. So this is why this board is probably taking this attitude with this, and I certainly look forward to it coming back with better plans. 
So I'll make a comment before we move on. Um, there is the option to table this. Um, it's something you have to agree to and you can come back with the changes that you kind of heard, like that we want a more detailed plan of where it's gonna be on the roof. Um, maybe an edited description to represent exactly that it's on the front, not on the back. Um, you know, um, more of an idea of what you kind of heard from us, but that's something you would have to agree to. Um, but then I will go to Tim, and if that's something you're willing to, we can talk about that option. Yeah. All right, Tim. Is this building sprinkled, sprinkled? The attic isn't yet. No. It is not. Well, I only ask because I know that inside is not what we look at, but it may require a fire escape of some sort. I just don't remember what the abutter did. Um, so that would be external. Um, I'd have to do my own research on that as well. I don't, I don't recall. I believe there's some sort of ladder apparatus on the back of. There is stairs on the back if you look at the application. But it doesn't lead to the third floor. Correct. And but I to think your point. the abutter has a ladder mounted, I don't remember, on the back, right on the corner of um, Constitutional and, you know, through that back parking lot. There's an, there's an escape mechanism, I believe, when they remodeled that top floor space into a studio apartment. So that if that is the case and it's required, then that too would need to be on the plan and the application. So you may want to have a conversation with fire personnel to see what type of secondary means of escape would be required because your one means of escape is the stairway but anything greater than 20 feet off the ground requires a rescue platform, fire escape, something else. And if that something else isn't on the exterior, we need to approve that something else. So, um, Paul, I did see your hand. Thank you. Um, second means of egress uh, aside, uh, I agree with the conversation on, I would recommend that um, this be tabled and we seek additional information. And Laura had uh, indicated some of the items that we're looking for, but things that I'm gonna add to that list a little bit. So locating the dormer on the roof, um, such that we can also figure out where it is on the facade, uh, identifying front or back. Uh, I would note that the abutter next door has one in the front and the back. Um, the updated hand drawing showing the, what was the shed, shed roof, whatever the correct roof typology is instead of a gabled, and, um, and a list of uh, materials that you're proposing to use. So um, if it's hardy, just write out hardy in the color, and just so we have a list of, of what the materials are, I think that would cover you I don't think any of us are generally opposed, or I'm certainly not generally opposed to the idea. We just don't have the documentation to show that it's going to be, you know, we can't approve this tonight because you're not going to build this tonight. So. All right. So, any other comments, questions, or concerns before? Um, so it sounds like you might be amenable to tabling instead of us voting on a, a, either an approval or a denial. Okay. So understanding that, do we have a motion, Richard? I'll make a motion to table this until our next meeting so that he can come back with revised plans with more detail. All right. Do we have a second? Second. All right. We have a second. All those in favor? Aye. All right. Aye. So the tab um, it is tabled, and you'll be coming back before us as old business as long as we get all that information. All right. Thank you. All right, next on the agenda, Mark Cross is seeking a certificate of appropriateness for a deck replacement on a property located at 9-11 Beacon Street. Michelle. Yes, the applicant is seeking to replace an existing deck with a deck of the same size constructed of pressure-treated lumber and decking. Proposing is proposing to install balusters and replacement of the existing lattice. All right, thank you, Michelle. Do we have an applicant who would like to speak about the project? Would you like to come up and tell us anything further or just wait until we have questions? All right, so we'll open this up to the board for questions, comments, or discussion. Tim. Is there any proposal to screen 
from the deck to the grade? So since that's an actual question, I'll have you come up and state your name. Mark Carls. Thank you. Could you angle that mic up so it points at you? Thank you. What was your question? Sorry. So from under the deck is currently proposed to be open. Is there a potential that it's going to be uh, have a, a cover there, you know, like a skirting of sort? Um, that was not on the plan, but if you guys like that, we can add it to it. Just, no, I mean, if it was to be proposed, it. usually we don't like the diagonal diamond-shaped lattice work. Um, was, most no. likely be I would want to have it to have a, a vertical battens. Um, but <clears throat> I, I'd support this application. Um, I'm not sure how the lattice work even held up this long. That's there for a, a guard. That's what that's called. And so I don't have a problem with the applicant, even as proposed, as presented, as long as the uh, there's no intent to enclose it. And if there is, then it has to be seen to be here. Enclose the no the, the bottom. You know. Liz? I'd just like to raise a question for the board to discuss. Um, I'm just noticing that there are three different styles of decks and balcony construction on this house. So there's a, a nice, I really, I think the one on the front of the house is the most appropriate, where the posts come up above the guardrail, uh, above the cap, uh, the balusters meet <laughs> square to the top and bottom rails. There's no, like, board that they're side nailed to the way you see up on those fire balconies yep. and if you look at the existing back stair you're replacing you have the posts coming up above the rail they have a little fin heel on top um, you know something like that or a post cap yeah, put post caps would on. be would be more appropriate I think than the say say the style that you're proposing is more like the um, the rear balconies um, the the real these ones up here yep. yeah um, I think if I had my way, I would, I would, have, you know, I changed those two, right? But, but here we are. I like that the front one is appropriate. I think, uh, and I just would encourage if, if people, what about the people think about requesting that the posts come up above the cap rail and we have a, a more historic style balustrade as opposed to what's up on the balconies. So, Richard, if you had a comment around that. Yeah. So, obviously, we've got the survey. This is dated from 2010, so this is already 14 years old. I don't know if these are still accurate to it. Thank you. Um, obviously, these are the more current ones, but it only shows the one side with the stairs. And am I correct to assume that we're just talking about the one, just that one, that one, one deck that faces the parking lot with a large retaining wall? So it's just the one deck that we're talking about. Just You're not one, yeah. doing anything with the others <laughs> on the side uphill of the house or the second floor fire Correct. access. Just that one. one. Okay. Just got some rotted wood and yep. entryway for tenants. You know, I, I, I certainly agree. It'd be nice to get something more uniform through the building rather than having three or four different yeah. styles to everything. So, you know, uniformity really goes a long way in houses and keeping it to look more appropriate, if you will. Yep. All right. just I think I saw George hand around this discussion first yeah, and I, then I, Paul. I, I just want to say I don't real I don't have a problem with this either. Um, my only hang up would be it's just going to be stained by the end of the summer. Um, I'm a firm believer of staining, and don't tell me it's going to take a year because no. that's not going to happen. Yeah, it, it can be stained if you guys want it to match the brown or whatever. That's all I, you know, stain because everything else is stained there. As long as it doesn't stay pressure treated and it's stained or painted by the end of the summer, I'm good. Okay. Thank you. Paul? I uh, agree with uh, both those comments. I like the consistency in Liz's comment. Um, and then uh, just a question for the board on, yeah, pressure treated is not my favorite finished material. So uh, do we typically require them to be stained or painted? Um, I would certainly want to see that as well. Yes, with pressure treated, we have always required that it either be stained or painted, correct? You just can't dictate color. <laughs> uh, just because, like you said, we don't want untreated wood out there. It does not fit within the district, so that is one criteria we do put on. Can that just wait for warmer weather, the stain part? We oh, yeah. usually give around a six-month time lead, but uh, 
Um, but Tim, I saw your hand next. Right, and, and to tag along with uh, the comments, um, <clears throat> I too agree that the plan as presented mimics pretty closely the upper balconies above it. Um, it does not complement the two small port decks that were installed over the roof in the front of the building, but we can only, you know, jump one hurdle at a time. <clears throat> So if the deck, as proposed, it seems to be matching the railing style of the balconies above. Would you concur? Would you concur? Yes. Yeah. And that was basically why I said that I wouldn't have a problem with it, because it appears that on the, on the plan that was submitted, that that railing, that guard si style is the same guard style as the railing of of the decks above it. So that's why I'm, I'm good with it. I'm kind of going back to Liz's original conversation about having those raised balusters on it. My only thought around that, not that I'm opposed to us mimicking what's in the front or anything like that, but I also am one of those people that tend to hang up on things a lot. <laughs> I'd just be curious, like, with, and Tim, this might be more of a question to you based on your history, like, is there a reason things may be moved across from those being a raised um, pillar around a deck or anything of that such? Just a construction method. It just okay. The contractor sure had an like idea to do it this way, and it's fine. It's a style. Close later. Okay. Yeah. All right. That was my only thing. All right. Any other questions, comments, motions? Motion to approve as submitted. All right, we have a motion to approve as presented and seconded by Paul. With stipulation of the abstain. Oh, with, I'll amend that, I'll accept that motion. Um, I'll motion that the plan and then the deck be approved as submitted with the condition that it be stained or painted within six months. And do we want to add the balustrade comment? The who? Well, that's what was presented. So. That is what's presented? Yeah, it is. Uh, well, yeah. I thought we were talking about the this. Raising the posts, yeah. Uh, the posts. They've, they've, they're they're not out. proposing oh, that. So. Well, it's up to the motioner. Um, so, so you are not adding that as a, another the railing to raise. Currently, the railings on the plan matches the decks above so I'm good with that as it's presented with the condition that it be stained or painted All right. within six months. So I will clarify Paul are you still good with your second or do you want to take it back knowing that that is not a stipulation? I don't know if I fully understand Liz's, Liz's comment. <laughs> well, <laughs> well actually I, so we'll I open up to further discussion. discussion. <laughs> yeah I actually asked for, for a discussion by the board and I'm glad that I did because I, I can see the point that if you have on that one facade multiple types of balustrades maybe that's a little bit awkward so i've been persuaded okay. <laughs> to join on with uh to i uh, to go with it as presented and maybe someday we get the front address yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes i'm good to maintain my second okay all those in favor please say aye aye, aye. aye. all right any opposed all right, motion passes with that one um, condition of it needs to be painted, uh, stained or painted in six months. Okay. All right. So what, do I just go ahead and get a apply for a permit Monday or something? Uh, yes, so the city will get a copy of this decision and then they can give you your permit. Okay, thank yes. you. Thanks for coming thank you. in. Thank you. thank you. All right, any other new business before the commission tonight? All right, seeing that there is none, we will move on to workshop business. Tim. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, there was a workshop tonight on the historical sign plaque by the historical sign plaque, uh, not commission, oh my God. Subcommittee. Thank you. <laughs> I drew blank there, I apologize. Um, and the discussion was basically around confirming the style and size of the plaque that we would be doing it. We also reiterated that it will be made out of an AZAC trim board and that w our further discussion went on to about uh, funding and financing and fees and who's going to control that and that would be now we 
believe we discussed that that's going to be part of the historic, uh, the Summersworth uh, Museum would be in charge of uh, those fundings for the plaque. Um, <clears throat> we started at uh, 6 p.m. pretty sharp and we concluded at about seven minutes of uh, seven. All right, thank you, Tim. All right, any conversation, addition, or any other workshop business? I just have some communication. Um, 37 Lincoln Street, uh, they came in last month uh, before the Historic District Commission. Uh, they had originally got approved to replace all the windows in uh, 2015, and three of the windows did not get replaced as part of that approval. So we reviewed the file, and um, it looks like that's when um, the time lapse for the historic district was not on this. So uh, staff is recommending that we move forward with this, and at the time of building permit, just make sure it's the same uh, window that's being replaced. So no changes to the original? No changes to the original. I just wanted to make uh, the board aware. All right, thank you. And then I guess we will open it up to the rest of the board for communication and or miscellaneous tonight. Any other communications? Tim? Small item. Um, notice that there's, it's right about where Prospect meets Beacon, but a little bit up the hill. So I'm not familiar with the house. But it has been historically approved for us to always have, you know, the, the grills between the glass. And noticing this one house that, probably followed those recommendations faithfully when they replaced their windows, and I'm not sure how long ago, the grills fell out. And they're all leaning over like diamonds all over the front of the house. So I'm only pointing that out that if an applicant has an alternative to the grills between the glass, maybe we should listen to the alternative because I'm shocked at, the expense of what those windows must have cost. They haven't lost their seal. They still look like they're functioning as design, but the, the styles fell out <laughs> from in between the glass. So that's just food for thought for everyone as we move forward. Yeah, I, I know exactly how you're talking about. I believe it's gray, and oddly enough, they almost all tilt the same way. <laughs> but they just not standing up straight in the middle of the window anymore. They're over. And it looks horrible. And there's well, nothing they can do the about it. The going back to the window manufacturer and getting... Hopefully they can, but there's fixed. nothing as a homeowner themselves can, oh, I'll just go fix that. You can't. It's in between the glass. Right. That would have to go back to the manufacturer, yeah. to your point. Yep. All right. Any other communication or miscellaneous tonight? And one other piece of food for thought, probably to the city planner. Has there any been discussion about two telephone poles together or three telephone poles together and they've been there f for years now and it's like a telephone pole forest. <laughs> um, if you look up and down, especially, uh, is it Grand uh, Grove, Street. Grove Street? Yeah. 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 And um, no Noble Street as well. On Noble Street, there's two locations there are three poles all together because the old one was replaced and then that one was stayed there so long that one was replaced and the two originals are still there so we might want to have city staff look into are there any I mean, uh, ways what do you do have I mean, the city contact the utility company to see if they're going to be removed or what's the plan so this item has been brought up at the council level and um <laughs> Uh, they're work, they're trying to work with the utility company, which is uh, has been difficult to work with. So uh, staff is working on that issue. But um, yes, I, Richard. This was even a state level thing. The house bill was actually House Bill One 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 One, which oddly enough looked like four telephone poles. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, one thing I do want to just circle back real quick, sorry, to workshop business. Did we officially say if we were having a workshop next month before our regular HDC? I think we got sidetracked and never actually we did solidified. Not. We did not. I don't not, think we did. It's not in my notes. So do we need to schedule that? I know. I think it would be best to schedule it. We would, if we decide to cancel it, it's better than to 
do that than to realize we need one and then try to have one. I agree. So um, is everybody amenable to doing 6 p.m. before the next HDC meeting again as normal since that has been the way? I'd agree. I see a lot of nodding heads, so we'll go with that. All right. All right. Sorry to circle back, but any other communication, yes, George? Yes. Uh, I don't, probably doesn't affect us, but since we're talking about getting stuff to the city here. Um, also on Grove Street, where they repaved last, the year before last, um, they do all the grates. They come back and replace all the grates, and they leveled everything off, and all the manhole covers, except the one eight-inch gas main out in front of my house. And it's five inches deep, and you can hear it every time somebody hits it. Oh. It's eight inches around, five inches deep. I've called uh, Mike, and Mike had called uh, a utility company, Northern Utility, or well, whoever it is now, uh, Unitil. I've called Unitil a couple of times. Oh, we're going to get right on that. I don't see anything done. I spent like two years, to my, and I've gone out there twice and spray painted the pavement with orange paint so people could see it. I know where it is. And my next step is to fill it with either concrete or tar. Uh, this is ridiculous. Shh, don't confess that. Yeah, All right, so we'll ask city staff. I appreciate today. your humor, George. Thanks. <laughs> All right, any other communication or miscellaneous tonight? Paul. Well, firstly, just uh, it's great to finally be here. Sorry I missed the, the first meeting. Um, and also, I completely missed the workshop before this. That was my bad. I was in the other room doing reading. So, um, <laughs> my, <laughs> so my apologies. Um, Question on the plaque program. Super great, really excited about it. Um, has there been discussion around standardizing placement on buildings? Because I'm certainly looking forward to getting a plaque for my house and wondering where the hell I should attach it. It was part of the discussion. I believe we left that pretty open, but we were um, having a suggestion of the front facade because we have so many different styles in the district. But um, Kim, keep me honest here if that was. I think we had discussed um, two potential locations. Both would face the street in fronts, not necessarily if it's a corner lot, it would be where the front door faces. And it would be either inboard of a corner board or next to the front entrance. That's what I recall. I believe those were recommendations, but not you must apply by. Right. Just the, just I like in the middle of the first floor window, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah, just a thought for it. Ease. If I were an, an applicant, which I certainly hope to be for one of these signs at some point, I think it would be great if the application had a little mock-up elevation of like, it needs to be six inches inboard from this architectural detail or whatever, you know what I mean? Kind of like an ADA, like an ADA diagram for like grabbing heights. Or it's a great idea or and I think we could arrange that. Yeah, just it, so it's like, oh, you've got two options, here they are, this is how it would work. And just take out the question of, uh, make it easy, right? Thank you. Noted for next one, and hopefully you can join us. <laughs> All right. Any other communication miscellaneous and or motions? Motion to adjourn. We have a motion to adjourn. Do we have a second? second. We have a second from George. All those in favor? Aye. 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 We are adjourned. <laughs>